I have something new today, a security camera system. To be specific, an IP camera and network video recorder or MVR. There's a lot of cutting edge stuff going on with this technology that everyone should be aware of. And it's also a great home DIY project that's very useful. I'm going to do a more comprehensive video on exactly how to choose IP cameras and where to place them. But today, I am looking at one specific system that caught my eye. This isn't a sponsored review, no affiliate link. It's just a really interesting product that I brought to use myself. And I thought you would enjoy seeing how it works. It's the HI35360. I'll put a link to the AliExpress store in the description box. Now, just a warning, this video covers face recognition technology. And I know like guns and a lot of other subjects, people have some very strong feelings about that. Please don't freak out in my comment section. I also think that like guns, no matter how you feel about them, the better educated you are, the better choices you are able to make and the more rationally you'll be able to argue your points. Being ignorant of something won't make it go away. Understanding how it's implemented, what its weaknesses are, that just might. Also, security. I work with IP cameras a lot at home. I've sat down and looked at outgoing traffic with Wireshark. I know engineers who work on the firmware. Even if there is no malice, no backdoors, no funny business, the, na the very nature of how IP cameras work make them incredibly difficult to secure once they are exposed to the internet. No matter where they are made, what brand is on the box, no IP camera should be treated as absolutely secure. In my opinion, interior, interior areas of a home should always be on a private wireland and not connected to the internet. Exterior areas and entrances can be connected provided you operate under the assumption they are unsecure. Under no circumstance should wireless cameras or cameras connected to the internet ever, ever be in a child's room or any place where they spend time. There are countless stories of this going wrong. If you are suspicious of China, that's fine, no offense taken, but the problem is inherent in the technology and how it's being implemented. Trust no one, no company, no installer, no coder. Not when it's your children who might be at risk. The only secure IP camera is an air gap IP camera. That out of the way, a typical home needs maybe six to eight cameras to give us a good idea of what is happening or what has happened if something goes wrong. But what's even more important is to know who did it. So having at least two cameras mounted less than six feet or two meters off the ground to clearly capture faces is absolutely essential. I found this store on AliExpress that claimed to be selling a face recognition MVR for under $15. This is frankly pretty ridiculous. Most are for huge enterprise applications and cost from one to $20,000. There are a few Chinese stores that sell face recognition systems that are just dodgy Windows software and a USB camera. This was a proper power over Ethernet IP camera system running a Linux-based MVR, which was pretty unusual. I did a bit of checking and it's a new chipset designed to just do this. So for under $100 for the MVR and IP camera, I thought I would check it out. I already have a PoE switch and an old half drive for use. Let's unbox it, plug it in and see what we've got. Okay, there is a zoom screw and a focus screw. You can adjust them to change the field of view and um, there the lens is waterproof and the enclosure is metal, it's pretty steady. And there's a PoE jack here, but I won't know until 
I plug it in, but it's pretty straightforward. What? There is only one tiny little word inside? Oh, of course, I don't feel like treating because I know there is. It's supposed. I supposed to put my old half drive, the free free tailor buy uh, half drive in it. But uh, it's so funny to see it has such a huge black box, but inside there is only one tiny control board to control the whole thing. Okay, all right. Okay, now I'm going to format the hard drive I put in. Okay, uh, I'm just going to use this camera now. Actually, I have another camera outside of the door, but now I'm going to demo. I'm just going to demo the one I have. Okay, I'm not going to add any users. I'm just going to leave it like this. But in the real world, of course, you are going you are going to type in the password. You are never going to live at the default setting. If it is the default setting, I'm just going to save. Okay, it's asking me to active the face module. Uh, the face module is too big to install on the little board, so I have to go to the go online and download the uh, face module to the hard drive. Network setting, network active face. Data transfer. Activating phase module successful. Okay. okay, I know I can probably get pretty good face recognition indoors, but that's kind of too late, right? I'm going to mount two cameras outside, let it run for a few days, and see what it gives us. Alright, so it's been a few days. The first day, I realized that the camera really needed to see the front of people's face. It can only handle up to maybe a 45 degree angle with accuracy. 
With the gate camera perpendicular to the road, it was just getting side profiles. So I made this warning face recognition in new sight on my Maybot laser box laser cutter and put it below the camera. It's an old trick for getting people to look straight at it. You can also put hand tie or googly eyes or anything eye catching there. Normally, you want cameras to be unobtrusive, but with face recognition systems, the longer you can get them to look at the camera, the cleaner your capture face images will be. Putting it at the end of a hallway would work also. Anything so that they are facing straight onto it. Next, I manually adjusted the camera settings to get better exposure on the faces. This low-cost face recognition is pretty sensitive to light changes and doesn't like low light very much. So I think ideally it would be used indoors with artificial light. Once I made those changes, I started getting a lot of faces, delivery people, neighbors, and random passers-by. The ones I knew, I tagged with a name. Like every single face recognition system I've ever used, this one has terrible profile management. Its options are name, an ID number you can assign, male or female, and why a black? Which is a little strange, but I'm really hoping that's just a way to adjust exposure or detection. Since darker skin works better with different algorithms, and it's good to account for that. You don't want forced hits just because people have darker skin, which is a real problem with some systems, still a little odd. You can't group additional face captures under one profile to improve recognition, just the one. There is no way to import or export face data to other systems or other platforms. This is something really frustrating that is a problem on almost every face recognition platform. Poor standards compliance. There is an XMP standard for face tagging that embeds the information in the image. It works really well, it's just no one uses it. This is a problem for security software, and it's a problem for most image gallery management software. Almost everyone is just doing their own thing as far as face tags and nothing talks to anything else. Digicam is a good open source option for organizing and tagging faces. Ideally, face recognition MVRs could work with the standard tags it writes. This is not technically challenging, it just takes a commitment to follow established technical standards. But look, $50 for a usable face recognition system and $50 for the camera? Beggars can be choosers. Let's see how it works in the real world. Here's our scenario. You've made the mistake of breaking up with me, and if I can't have you, no one can. Let's see if the camera system can detect your psycho jealous ex Naomi Wu loitering outside your door with her lockpicks and a garage. I know you're in there. Not bad, not bad. I think most practical for indoors, but you could certainly use this in a lot of situations to help alert you to known bad actors. But just to help alert you, obviously the recognition rate is nowhere near perfect, but helpful for disgruntled former employees, known shoplifters, ex-partners, not something to rely 100% on, but a good layer of larger defense in-depth security system. Okay, cons. The mouse tracking cannot be adjusted, so pointing and clicking things is unreasonably difficult. Also, it won't recognize a USB keyboard. You have to type everything in with a virtual keyboard. The GUI is not bad, but you are still looking at a few hours spent dialing everything in and figuring out how it all works. Face detection works best indoors with artificial light, and the camera about head height don't count on good results putting it outside like I did. There is a mobile app, but it's dodgy looking. I would not touch it. It requires way too much information, too many permissions, and basically opens your cameras up to the outside world. 
Last, it really needs better face tagging and profile management. Pros, it's so cheap for what it is. Even if you never use the face recognition, it's still a fairly easy to use 16 channel network, network radio recorder that's on VIF compatible. Next, it works pretty much out of the box. You can turn it on with the camera plugged into the network. It will find them and show them, but don't leave it like that because they have no password set. Lots of systems require a whole deal of special Windows apps and lots of hassles to set up. This is pretty much plug and play and no computer required. The cameras actually do the face detection. While the recognition of the face images, the camera send is done on the MVR. That's why you record any on VIF camera, but you can use just any camera for face recognition. Because the cameras have face detection built in, they can FTP face captures to your NAS or to a VPS somewhere, giving you an extra layer of backup. The camera quality is also excellent for the price, with a lot of extra features not found on more expensive cameras. I'm not completely so on their security though. So as always, if they're going to be connected to the internet, they should only be at entrances and exterior locations. Would I use this as my only video recorder? Probably not. I would still prefer to have files kept on my Synology NAS. Blue irises, something easier to navigate. But as a better video recorder, it's great. The face blacklisting and alarm function works more than well enough to justify the price tag. Can it be improved? Of course, but it's a phenomenal value right now. Once again, this is not a pay review. There is no affiliate link. I'm going to link to the AliExpress store, but I know nothing about them and do not vouch for them. You are on your own. I just bought this and I'm really happy with it. If you want more information about protecting your home with IP cameras, I suggest checking out the forums at ipcamtalk.com. Nice people with a ton of useful information. Are you interested in more discussion of home security and IP cameras? Let me know in the comment section. If you would like to help me produce videos like this, where I have to buy something and can't get a review unit. Please consider sponsoring me at Subscribe Star. The address is in the description box. If that's not something in your budget, that is totally okay. Don't even worry about it. But it's super helpful if you post links to my favorite videos any place you think people might enjoy them. That's it for today. I'll see you all next time. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.